closer look at what Philae's mission actually is. Joining me here is the astrophysicist and space journalist Sarah Crothers. Sarah, welcome back to Hello, Sky News tonight. Thank you. Great to have you here again. Um, Let's just take us through this journey because it's been a very long journey indeed for Rosetta, hasn't it? This has been an epic journey. Actually, we need to go all the way back to 1993 when the mission was first thought of. It then took over 10 years for it to be actually launched in 2004 launched in 2004 and then it took 10 years to reach the comet. It was a journey of just thought, short of 4 billion miles. It had to slingshot round the Earth once, then round Mars, then back round Earth again, then be put to sleep and then woken up before it arrived at the comet. All to arrive at this comet. Some have likened it to looking a bit like a rubber duck, but yeah. uh, <sighs> it is quite extraordinary. Really, it is, and actually it does look like a rubber duck, and that was one of the big surprises to come out of the mission, because you think of comets and all we know about science, and we expected it to be spherical, to look maybe like a football, but yet we arrive at this, it looks like two spheres have almost smashed together, which could actually be what happened. So Churimov Gerasimenko was actually the second choice comet for this mission. The first choice actually missed the launch window for, and um, this comet is made of rock and dust and ice, mm -hmm. and it's really just quite a hazardous place. And space missions are often categorized into three different categories, difficult, very difficult, and extremely difficult. And trying to land on a comet after you've traveled across the solar system to get there is beyond extremely difficult. So a huge achievement It's today. been a nail-biting day, hasn't it? Let's just go through the day's events, because starting off this morning, now this was a key point, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, 9 o'clock this morning. So 9 o'clock this morning, or 8.30 this morning, it takes 28 minutes for the signal to actually go back to Earth. So we didn't find out about it until 9, but it happened at half 8. Philae actually was released from Rosetta, and then it went at walking speed, a distance of around 15 miles today. So it might have been an epic, very fast, high pace journey across space but the final kind of journey to this comet which is traveling faster than the speeding bullet was at a snail's pace pretty much or slightly faster than the snail so that's what happened today as it got towards the comet that's when we had a bit of technical issues. A bit of a technical yeah. issues. And of course, this is not, it's not easy, is it? I mean, it's been likened to landing, say, a balloon blindfolded in a large oh, city. Oh, I like that one. I haven't heard that. Oh, fly on the speeding bullet is the other one. It wasn't mine. But, <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary precision, this is well, the operation. Well, this is Europe's Apollo moment. Some people might not come out and say it, but it really is. This is a, we've only ever landed on six different bodies in our solar system. The moon, the planet, Venus, and Mars, um, two asteroids, and then Saturn's moon, Titan. So we've never landed on a comet before. It's going extremely fast. We did have problems with the thrusters when Philae mm -hmm. was released so on landing it was very very difficult and then this harpoon that you can see here and um, that didn't manage to grapple onto the comet correctly because um, you've got to remember scientists don't know what to expect when they get there so at the moment we've got these two screws attaching it to the comet but it's kind of a little loose so it's not as firmly attached as we wanted to but wanted it to be but still just an incredible achievement. And of course now the real work begins for Philae because now the drilling starts. Yep, that's right. There are loads of experiments on board. One of the experiments is actually to now drill it inside the comet because we want to find out more about comets. We've travelled all that way, we've photographed it, we've studied it from a, quite a close distance, but now we've got something on a comet we want to get inside and actually look at things like the temperature because comets are around mm. the early solar system, so by finding out the temperature, we can learn more about the temperature of the early solar system and we want to carry out experiments to learn more about the chemistry of the comet as well. Yes, because this is, oh, it's basically, it's a travelling lab, isn't it? It is, and, it is. And it's yeah. sort of very it's doing, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, for example, taking these panoramic uh, images. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think so many things come out of space, all the science and technology, which really does benefit on our everyday lives. It's pictures which inspire people. You mm -hmm. go back to the moon landings and you see pictures of the Earth, the Earthrise picture around the moon, and that was probably one of the greatest things to come out of Apollo. So the images which have been coming back of a surface of a comet, something we've never, ever seen before, are just incredible. And we're going to be getting these panogra uh, panoramic pictures from the surface, hopefully soon, which is just an absolute huge absolute achievement. Extraordinary achievement. And of course, let's not forget, because this is a pan-European yeah. uh, effort, and uh, the British effort. This is particularly what we're doing here. At the oh, is it working? <laughs> well, the British effort, we can tell you, is working. Tell us more about um, that. Well, the Ptolemy experiment, um, so this huge UK involvement, I think people all kind of forget that the UK has got huge involvement in space. We have got a very big and very growing space industry worth more than 10 billion a year to the economy. And the Ptolemy experiment, which was done by the Open University, is designed to understand more about the geochemistry of mm -hmm. the comet. So what's it made of, what types of chemicals, and that will help scientists to learn more about the comet, to begin to start to answer fundamental questions such as, 
what are comets made of, why are they so important, were they key to the reason we have life and water here on Earth? And indeed, of course, the origins of the solar system. I mean, it's huge, isn't it? It Absolutely. really is huge. Don't expect one big answer to come out and we're going to solve the mysteries of everything, but we're really beginning to scratch the surface in terms of science and exploration, and this is just a next step forward and a huge achievement for science and for engineering as well, because they built this thing, it's only the size of a refrigerator, and they managed to land it on something which is just two and a half miles in diameter, over 400 million miles away. Well,